My Rajinio finally arrived. So it's time for me to finally take control of my garage door opener and be able to control it however way, shape or form I want. Thanks to Paul Whelan, he came up with this project to actually solve a problem that was created by Chamberlain. A couple of months ago, Chamberlain, the parent company of companies like LeafMaster, one of the largest manufacturers of garage door openers here in North America, decided that they don't want their APIs opened up to any third party application anymore. So my home assistant integration and Apple Long Kit integration to my garage door broke and stopped working. It's been a pain because now I'm limited to just using the MyQ app. The whole idea of smart home automation is to be able to consolidate everything into one interface and be able to control it from there using either voice or you know phone or various means of control. And Chamberlain took that away from me right after the fact that I purchased the garage door. But thanks to this Brad GDO, it's time to take control and I'm going to be installing it today. Now, when I first saw this board, it kind of looked a little bit complicated and daunting. I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't want to have to do things like soldering. It's actually very simple and anybody can actually get this installed in less than 15 minutes. Come with me and let me show you how I got this down because I'm so excited to finally open my garage door using Apple Home Kit. Now, let's get started with installing the Rajidio. There's a little bit of a setup process to this thing, but it is not too, too complicated. First things first, you need a computer. In my case, I'm going to be using a Windows PC. You can also use this with a Mac as well. The first thing you want to do when you get your Agilio is to actually install the firmware. There are three different versions of the firmware. You have the ESP Home, MyQTT, or HomeKit. Now, these all have different roles. HomeKit, of course, as the name implies, means that you can integrate it directly into Apple HomeKit. Although I use Apple HomeKit as my native smart home control system, it is not my central control. I'll be going with the ESP Home version because I'm able to use that to integrate it into Home Assistant and then I can use Home Assistant to integrate into Apple Home Kit and any other platform that I feel like integrating into. MyQTT will be great for someone that's trying to use Node-RED. Node-RED can also be used within Home Assistant. If you went ahead and bought the complete installation kit, it does come with the micro USB cable. It also comes with a low voltage wire, which we're going to use for the connection process. The next thing you want to take a look at is the version of your board. Now, since this board got released, it has gone through multiple iterations and they're currently at version 2.5.3. When you try to place your order, I think you'll get the most recent one because I just ordered mine a few days ago and I got this guy. It is the 2.5.3. Now, the biggest addition to the 2.5 version is security 1.0 additions of terminals to the board for your obstruction sensor and then walk control terminals as well on top of the board. Essentially what that means is it tries to simplify the installation process making it very easy. So now we're on Paul Whelan's um, GitHub page which basically highlights and states a lot of these things I've mentioned so far, how to install it, what the firmware version is and depending on which of the versions you have as well you can kind of see which of them it is. So over here, like I said, I have the 2.5.3. So we can go out to that side and look at the wiring diagram. Now we'll come back to this guy a little bit later because we have to install our firmware first. So now under the section installing the firmware, it specifies that you can only use Google Chrome or a Chromium based browser. No other browser supports serial device connection. I'll be using Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge runs on top of Chromium. So it will work as well. So we're going to go down here and then click to launch the flash a tool and the best option is to use the ESP home as it is stated here. So we'll go with the ESP home installer and then we're going to scroll all the way down to download the driver. So this is the 2.5i. So basically everything that's 2.5. So if you're if you have the 2.5, 1, 2, 3, it will work. Once we've downloaded that, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and plug our USB cable and then we're going to connect it to the USB spot on the board. And if you look right there, you can see that the light comes on and then it pops up on the laptop. I'm going to go ahead to the download, the item I downloaded, which would be in my downloads folder. And then install, we're going to install that guy. So that has installed our USB to serial connection. We'll connect using the serial port. Connect and then install the board security. Do you want to erase it? Yes, I don't have anything on it. So we're gonna. Okay, now our installation is all done. I'll click next. Looks like it's uh, 
Now it's time to add it to my Wi-Fi. So we're gonna go ahead and add it to my IoT network. We connect it to the Wi-Fi. We go and add it to Home Assistant, Home Assistant domain. So now we are down into Home Assistant and we can kind of immediately see that it prompts for the RAD GDO ESP Home. So if we click Configure and then we can click Submit. And just like that, I'm gonna add that to my garage. And then that should be all good to go. And if I head over to my devices, GDO right there. So now let's take the board, go out to the garage and get this installed. First thing we want to do is unplug power to the garage door opener. You really don't want to do any work on the garage door opener when this part to it. This part is dependent on the type of garage door opener you have. Mine is a little bit of a newer model, so it's the one with the, it's got like a camera right there. I don't know if that's going to work with my GDL, but hey, I don't need that anyways. And then right on the side here, the wiring, you can see that mine is the, the yellow learn button, which means security 2.0. So the RAD GDO works quite well with this guy. If you look in there, there are four wires as well, just like on the GDO board. You have the two for your, the wall control and then the two for the garage door sensor. This is the four controls that like you will see on the RAD GDO board, right? You have the two for the wall control and then the two for the obstruction sensor. So we're gonna try and locate the one for the wall control and Disconnect the wall control. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to grab my right GDO board, which also has the two, the four connectors right there. And it's lit up as well. So on the back side, we're going to push down the pin and make sure it sits right in there. Push down the pin. And then, just like that, we've connected our wall control and we're going to take the wire which is the pass-through cable. I'm gonna connect that guy to the board. So we're gonna connect the red, which is the control, and the white, which is the ground, back in the same spot. We took out the old one, so it's nice and firmly in place. Next thing you wanna do is, this is the one for the obstruction center. Now, this one might be a bit of a challenge because there are two wires right in there. Okay. Try and take that out. So those are both out now. Might be a little bit of a challenge though. So I've decided I'm going to use these connectors on my obstruction detectors. I'm going to connect. Those are both in there. Gonna do the same thing for the, the control, uh, just like that. This cable to then connect it to the board. So now because these guys are too big to fit, so I'm using a, con a connector to connect these two together, and then using a single one to jump it into the board. I'm gonna do the same thing with this guy as well. It's all done now, we can see the two obstruction sensors, so one for the left and one for the right. So that's the control and the ground. And then we have the input from the wall controller as well, which is the control and the ground as well. And then they all come out and then this guy goes into the control as well. The ground for, there we go. Ground for, this is obstruction, wall panel, obstruction, wall panel. Next thing will be to actually do some testing, make sure it's all good. And then I'm gonna use a longer cable because the one provided is not long enough for my garage floor. My garage is um, it's pretty tall, so it's gonna need a little bit of a longer cable to reach the power cord. Go ahead and plug the cable right in. Now it's the moment of truth. Everything is all powered up now. The, you know the board is all connected and powered up as well. So I'm gonna head over to one assistant and see if we can see any of the status. So we're gonna go down to devices. 
So I'm gonna go and look for my ESP on the device. And then if I go in there, you can see the light is turned on, which it looks like it is turned on. So I'm gonna go and turn it off. Look at that, <laughs> it works. Okay, I can turn it on again. Okay, yeah, motion detected as well. That's pretty good. It looks like it's detected, yeah. Okay, we're gonna go and check the obstruction sensor as well. Let's see if it, okay, is this problem? Okay. Problem? Okay. It looks like we got this bug to working, all right. One more thing to try. We're gonna see if the garage door opens now. And voila, we're live. I'm gonna stop that as well. Stops. Okay. And voila, just like that. Everything works just like normal. The only thing is, I don't see the, I can't see anything with the cameras. Ah, look at that. I can reset the thing. I can do a bunch of diagnostics as well. I can sync stuff, add stuff to it. Diagnostics. Motor not running out. I can see total number of opens. Number of pet devices. I get everything. This stuff. <laughs> It is awesome. So the next thing that we're gonna do is to pair it up to Oma system, but we're just gonna add back to the house first. Now that the solution is done, we can go ahead and set up automations and connect it to Apple HomeKit. So we're gonna do this by using the HomeKit bridge. So I'm gonna head over to my home bridge, add a new entry. I'm gonna select cover and submit that. So now it's created that we just call that garage and finish. I'm gonna add back to the same one again. I'm gonna just rename this for easy identification. Just like that. Now configure that and I need to just um, include. I mean, you can either use exclude or include, but I, since I only wanna select one thing, so I'm just gonna use the include option and I'll look for the garage door, which should be right there. So once I click submit, and it's saved. So it should pop up here with the QR code. At this point is where I'm gonna use my, my phone to scan and add it into Apple Home Kit. I'm gonna go up into my Apple Home app. Go to Apple Home app, and then we're gonna add a new accessory. So once I scan that guy, then I'll add it to Home and then the code disappears from. So now the integration into our pump kit is complete. And we're gonna go out and try it out and see if it actually works as well. I'm not gonna be doing any automations from within Apple on Kit. It's purely just for opening and closing the garage and also getting a notification. With the ESP on, I can now use the light that is built into my garage door as part of my automation sequence within the garage door. With the exposure of all of the other entities by ESP on for my garage door, now I can use something like my garage door light as part of an automation. With the current setup, I have to be in front of the actual motion sensor, which is the controller for the garage door. Because of the way my garage is set up, there's a blind spot for that motion sensor. So sometimes I'll be in the garage and that light will go off. But now I have put in an additional sensor in the garage, in the part of the garage where the other motion sensor from my garage door controller cannot see. So I can use both of them in tandem to be able to control the light in the garage without turning on the full overhead light. This among many other things are the possibilities that can be done with this new integration. Another thing that I did is also doing automations such that when I approach my home, the garage door opens up. Now this is only gonna be peculiar and specific to just me. If somebody else were to do it, it's not gonna work. So I've used a bunch of conditions and uh, triggers to be able to make this possible. 
Another thing that is possible is now I can control it with, from my car as well. Now there's just so much that it gets opened up by this ESP home integration of my garage door. I hope this has been very helpful and uh, I look forward to catching you guys in the next video. Take it easy, stay safe, peace.